A little while back I did this collaborative video with Babatunde in Nigeria and he participated in a limited budget food challenge and I published that on my channel and then we did a recipe exchange which was really fascinating and just really stimulating exchange of food culture and I really enjoyed that. Just to update you on Babatunde's situation, after I published that video a lot of people asked me to set up a GoFundMe so that they could donate to help Babatunde and so I did that and it was a massive massive success so thank you everyone who donated to that. It raised over £2,000 and it enabled Babatunde to buy a new laptop. His laptop had been stolen so he's replaced that. Furthermore that money has enabled him to help other people in need in his community so it's really been a fantastic success and it's a really positive thing overall. So thank you to everyone who watched, helped or contributed. So we're going to do another recipe collab this time in two parts. No limited budget this time but I really wanted Babatunde to show me something traditionally Nigerian. And then in a follow up video in about a week's time I will try to make it myself. So over to Babatunde now for the rest of the video. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Baba Tunde, and now for this video we shall be looking at how we cook jollof fries in Nigeria, how we specifically cook jollof fries in, our, in Nigeria, and I know there are many areas that they cook it differently, but specifically we're going to learn, I'm going to show you how we actually cook it in our, specifically in western part of Nigeria, and I'll be showing you all the ingredients that uh, we'll be using for this uh, cooking. Now, uh, to add to the information now, you know, some of you might, might not have seen this before. So I'll be showing you the traditional way that we used to prepare our paper using grinding stone. You know, it's a very, very unique way of preparing our paper. And I also want to use this medium to thank everyone that actually contributed to my uh, GoFundMe. I don't know, Sincerely, I don't know how to appreciate you guys. I don't know how to say this, but I'm very, very grateful. And you can never imagine the number of families that you actually put smiles on their faces. I just want to say a massive thank you to you all for those that actually contributed and those that used their kind words and encouragement to also contribute. Thank you very much. Only the heaven can adequately reward you guys. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Alright, uh, good day everyone. Now today, I want to learn how to cook, how we cook jollof rice in Nigeria. Now these are the ingredients that we usually use to do that. So I'm going to introduce all the ingredients one by one. Uh, right here we have a uh, scotch bonnet. You can all see that? It's on a scotch bonnet. I don't know the number of countries that have this. Then now uh, here we have tomato. This is tomato. Then here we have cucumber. This one is cucumber. Actually, I was supposed to use the uh, carrot, but when I went to the market, carrot was not available, so we had to improvise. So we'll be using cucumber instead of uh, carrot. Then we have our uh, seasoning cube here. You can see that we have seasoning cube. Then we have our uh, tomato paste too. I think uh, the taste of tomato paste is somehow different from uh, the tomato uh, vegetable, so they taste different. So one supplement uh, the other, okay? Then we have uh, the we have the ginger and the garlic powder here. This one, ginger and garlic powder mixed together. As what we have here, then we have this. Usually, <clears throat> only uh, in Nigeria, we don't actually use this to uh, to cook jollof rice. We usually use this when we want to uh, cook our uh, fried rice, green rice, whatever you call it. So that's all. Yes, and I think it is uh, it's used to garnish the food. And I, I really love the taste. That is why I usually love it. Uh, I love it to be present in my food. I love it. Then here we have... Our curry powder, you can see that. Uh -huh. We have curry powder. These are it also makes uh, the uh, the the meal to be very very tasty. Then we have thyme. 
dried thyme. You put this to dried thyme. Then we'll have uh, bay leaves. Bay leaves. So here now we have nutmeg. Nutmeg is how it is sold in Nigeria. Then we have salt. This one is common. We have salt. Then we have our uh, oil. We have vegetable oil. This one is called uh, Devil King's uh, vegetable oil. It's called vegetable oil. Okay, I think this one is still out uh, the time. Then we have the our uh, turkey that we're going to prepare uh, the meal with. All right, then we shall start the whole process of cooking a typical Nigerian jollof rice now. Now we have uh, the separation of the stock from the uh, red bell uh, vegetable. She is separating the stock from it. And this is how it is typically done. Because uh, the stock part is not edible. All right, uh, this is our scotch bonnet. And I also have to do the same thing, separate the stock from the vegetable. Now, we're not going to use much of this because this vegetable is very, very spicy. So you need to be very, very careful of not using much. If not, you're not going to enjoy the food. So probably two, or probably six or seven is actually enough for the food. The pepper is very, very spicy. So you need to be very, very careful. So we have three types of uh, vegetable here. We have uh, the tomato, then we have uh, the red bell pepper here. Then we have the scotch, we have the scotch bonnet here. So the three of them are going to be grounded together using grinding stone. Many of you, might, many of you wouldn't have seen the grinding stone before. So we're gonna show you grinding stone and how it is used in Nigeria for grinding our food. Two or three balls of onions will be added. It depends on uh, depends on how you like to eat onions. You could use three balls, two balls, even one ball is even enough. So it depends on your taste. You rinse uh, the entire mixture because uh, you know our local market here is very very dirty. So there will be many particles that are actually uh, that are actually attached to the vegetable. So you have to rinse it very well so that you know there won't be uh, there won't be sand uh, in the food so you have to read it properly so this is the granny stone so she's cleaning the granny stone preparing it for the for the job that is ha it has a head so she has to clean the surface to read the surface of any sand particle that can actually you know that can make a uh, the vegetable to become unusable for the preparation of the meal. So she has to wash everything clean, rinse everything very, very clean. So this is the grinding of the pepper, as you can see. <laughs> Just have to be you know, doing it slowly, that is, you'll be taking the vegetable little by little. Don't just pack everything on the stone like that, you know, it will not be easy to grind. So, you take it slowly. We have many Nigerian young girls that don't even know how to use this stone anymore. My wife is very good at using this. In fact, in Africa, we have some people that they believe that using this stone to grind pepper actually makes the food to be to be tastier, at least to be more delicious than using uh, Western, probably using. Uh, a uh, grinding machine to grind it or using a blender to do that. Some people actually believe that. That when you use this grinding stone to grind your pepper, that to make your food to be tastier, 
than the other ways, but I don't actually believe in that. But we have a lot of people that actually believe in that. So after grinding the pepper, you have to scoop it into a plate. So this is how it is been done. So to be able to grind the onion, you have to slide the onion. So that will make it easier for the for the grinder to make it very easy to grind once the onion is sliced. It takes a lot of effort, especially your your wrist. <laughs> so this is the entire mixture. The mixture of the four vegetables that we'll be using to prepare the jollof rice. So this is the preparation of the of the turkey. So you raise the turkey, then after that, uh, we're going to fry the turkey. You parboil it before frying it. So parboiling before frying it so make it uh, solid and tastier. Yeah. Okay, now since uh, once the turkey is prepared, onion, sliced onion will be added to the turkey. Then after that, we will add our uh, season. Then after that, curry will also salt to be added. This one of this. One cube is enough. One cube is enough for this cooking. So next is our so curry is being added to enhance the flavor. Now, the whole mixture needs to be parboiled. Everything is going to be parboiled. So this will be parboiled for roughly 20 minutes. Okay, I think the turkey is done now. So the next thing is to use sieve to sieve out the stock. That is uh, the water that you use to parboil the, the turkey. So the stock will be used to cook the rice in order to enhance the flavor of the rice. So. All right. The stock of the turkey is very, very important. So the next step is now the frying, uh, the frying of the turkey. Now, our small slices of onion will be added. The purpose of that is to also damage the flavor of the turkey and also to know when the turkey is to be inside, is to be, yeah, and to know when the turkey is to be uh, deep into the oil. So, once slices of onion turns out uh, light brown, that is when the turkey will not be uh, deep into the frying oil. So uh, we're slicing the onion and also the tomato also the slice. This is what we use uh, to garnish to to garnish the rice and also uh, we'll be using uh, the green pea too. So this is being done right now in order to save time so that when the 
uh, the rice is almost uh, done. It's just be added to the rice. So the turkey is done. So we'll be using the oil that she used to fry the turkey to to cook the soup for the jollof rice. And after that, some uh, slices of onion will also be added. So the granite mixture should be added to the to the oil to fry it off. So the whole mixture is to be stirred continuously till everything is mixed up. So this should be left for like uh, three minutes to fry off a little bit. So the next thing is for the uh, ginger and garlic to be added to the mixture now. Ginger and garlic will be added to the mixture depending on how much you like uh, eating garlic. Shouldn't, shouldn't put much so that you know, you know, you know, destroy the taste of the, of the food. So, this is uh, curry powder, it has a little bit of curry powder too. Okay, time will now be added. Time. Uh, a little bit of time to also be added. Same quantity of uh, nutmeg will also be added to the mixture, to the soup. This is the chicken spice and it will be added to the soup in order to make it more tasty. This is our uh, four cups of uh, parboiled rice. So the rice is to be rinsed now in order to remove any sand or stone particles uh, that could be inside it. Some water will also be added for the second round. The rinsing of the rice for the second round. A little bit of water will be added in order to make the soup more watery. After that, the rinsed rice will now be transferred into the pot. The rinsed rice will now be transferred into the pot. Now the cucumber, which will be used to garnish the rice, will now be sliced into a bowl. So you make sure you spread everything around the pot. You spread the rice around the pot so that it's not be concentrated in one spot. The soup will now be tasted to see if the salt and the seasoning is enough. If it is not enough, then uh, more will be added. And if it is enough, then the whole thing will be covered. Yes, the seasoning is not enough. So a cube will now be added to make it three cubes. And also another pinch of salt will also be added to make the taste perfect. 
So a spoon of butter we have it. So we we'll wait for some minutes. So at this stage the the flame will now be reduced so that the uh, the rice will not burn faster. The flame will be reduced so that it will now be cooking slowly. Because if we don't reduce the flame, it can make the rice to burn before it is uh, it is finally cooked. More water will now be added because the water won't be enough. So a little uh, some water will be added. It should be gently stirred in order to prevent it, in order to prevent it from burning. So just now for the for the green pea to be added. So the water of the green pea will now be poured away. The next thing now is to is to wait some minutes so that the the rice can steam up before it is finally done. So the rice is uh, 98% complete now. Not 8% done. Okay. Now the green uh, beans will be added. Okay. So it will now be stirred. That everything will mix up thoroughly. So now the sliced onions and the pepper and the uh, tomato will now be added. I think it's now looking like uh, African or uh, let me say Nigerian jollof rice. So the aroma it is now giving out the perfume of uh, Nigerian jollof rice. So after the complete stirring. The pot will now be closed in order to make everything to cook together. It is now completely done, ready for dishing. Fully ready for eating now. As you can see, it is giving very, very, it is giving out very, very nice aroma. And I love it. I can't wait to eat it. Hi, everyone. The project that we're working on this time around is jollof rice and it's actually my favorite food when I was growing up. I really loved jollof rice. It was a delicacy that I was actually in love with when I was a kid. I really love it. Every time I come home and I see my mom preparing it, oh man, I will become very, very excited and, uh, and elated and very, very happy. So I really love eating jollof rice and that is why I'm very, very excited on this project uh, that we are doing this time around because it's actually uh, about my favorite uh, meal when I was a kid. So over to you, Mr. Mike. I hope you like it. I'll watch your video and see how you're going to prepare yours. And I hope you'll enjoy the note just as I actually enjoyed mine. Thank you. So that was really interesting and that does look good and I can't wait to taste it. So in about a week's time, I will upload a video where I attempt to make jollof rice and let's see if I can do it. But for now, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.